by pressure in the air on the professor Danny Cabral and he received his PFK from the University of Washington in 2009 and he received his MFA in the Higher School of Arts in 2011 and currently he is working as a adjunct professor at PCMG here and before he came here he had Recently, in the, last, in the last one year, he had two residency. The first one is in Anderson Branch in Colorado, focused on printmaking. The second residency was in um, Kalar Institute in Berkeley. This is actually hard at Dr. No, uh, Professor um, So um, I know them pretty well personally. So uh, now I'd like to give a time to them. As I understand, I'm going to give a presentation of my work and talk about sort of my process of um, what I'm interested in my work and show you guys some examples of what I make. But I'm curious, as I understand, there's also a component to this evening after the talk where you guys might have some work to show me and you can do kind of a critique um, for some of my art students. So I'm just curious, if you want to raise your hand, um, if anybody has work that they were preparing or they thought about, you know, doing sort of a little critique to see the thing. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally happy to do it. I'm thrilled to talk about your guys' work. Um, that's, that's a pleasure for me. So think about it. If you want to, after the talk, I'm going to be around and I'd be happy to get together with you guys and take a look at what you're doing. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, so I guess to get started tonight, uh, as I said, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about my artwork, my process for making artwork, and the evolution of my work over the past several years, uh, from the time that I was sort of in the position that you guys are in now, as a BFA you know, student, sort of through my graduate study, and into the past year or so, as I'm, you know, starting to define a career for myself as an artist. So, uh, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about how that all unfolded. Um, I guess to get, uh, give you a sense of just sort of where I'm coming from, um, and some of the things that inspire me about sort of what my work is about. Uh, in my artwork, I'm interested in observation. Sort of, uh, and observation, particularly in regard to the way that we see the spaces that we inhabit, whether that be a room, a building, a uh, street, or a city. I'm um, interested in observation because how we per perceive those places through our eyes. Uh, and, uh, and I guess. As part of that, sort of how we encounter and understand the place, what viewpoint we bring to a place, what sort of perspective. Uh, um, it might it seems like it might be that throughout the talk, so it's just very briefly on that regard. Um, but what sort of viewpoint we bring to spaces, how we encounter them, what perspective we bring. Um, and I'm particularly interested when that perspective gets shifted. Or distort it a little bit. I think it's a, a sort of goal that I've set for myself when I work is whether it's in, uh, and I work in you know, a few different media, and I'll talk more about that in, in just a sec, but sort of across the, the range of things that I make, I try to invoke that, just a subtle alteration to uh, what, what we see or what we might perceive as being a very familiar or common space to as our Making the more mysterious aspects of the places that we encounter on a regular basis. Um, and I'm also interested in just how much we can trust what we see, the scene we make. Uh, I think that's an interesting uh, territory. So, those are some kind of questions that I ask within my work. Um, I mean, another sort of key aspect is in terms of that interest in observation is the role that architecture plays in sort of framing our understanding of space, framing how we interact with different spaces, how we perceive different spaces. Um, 
And uh, finally, just in terms of how I make my work, what sort of things that I do in terms of making my work, I, my background is in printmaking. So that's kind of the bedrock of uh, how I approach making artwork. Um, but I also engage with photography and installation uh, in my work as well. So that ability to draw from a few different practices has been really important to me. I think every, every art process that you engage with, I'm, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, uh, when you're in the different classes that you're in, offers a different way of, of dealing with information, dealing with visual information. Uh, and so, in terms of my, in terms of looking at perspectives, and looking at architecture, and looking at space, I think being able to look at that through a lot of different lenses, so to speak, uh, has been really critical to me. Um, so, let's take a look at some images. Is it really going to mess up the video quality if you didn't like that just a little bit more? Um, is this pretty clear? You guys see like I guess I think in a lot of ways my interest in architecture and in uh, space, in, in perception of space, and in later in, in observations sort of developed out of um, the experience of living in a city, living in a, in a dense urban environment. I'm originally from uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. As Chung mentioned, I went to the University of New Mexico for my degree, uh, for my BFA degree. And uh, I don't know if anyone's ever been to that part of the country, but it's a really wide, it has a really wide open sense of space. It's a very atmospheric place, it's a very open place. It's a lot of life in that landscape. Um, and I took the opportunity, you know, I had the opportunity when I was an undergrad student to spend a period of time studying in Glasgow, Scotland. And that's a, a city, it's a landscape, Scotland's landscape, that is completely different from anything that I'd ever experienced before growing up in New Mexico. Um, I'm sure you guys are all have a sort of image of the British Isles in your mind. It's a very heavy atmosphere. Of course, it rains a lot. Um, the air is very sort of dense and heavy with moisture. And Glasgow in particular is this old kind of industrial city and it has this weight to it. Everything is set in uh, dense snow and brick. In, in a lot of ways it's like Philadelphia. So that place was totally different to me. And it was pretty shocking. Um, and I, you know, there's a certain amount of disorientation and uh, kind of confusion that just comes out of being in a new place, of course, but in particular for me being in that place, it was really uh, sort of shocked the system. And I think part of the way that I dealt with that uh, difference, that, that real change of atmosphere, was by making drawings. And this is an example of one of the drawings that I was making at that time. Um, and the, the drawing sort of reflected what I perceived as, as being really intense and kind of chaotic environment, the city of Glasgow. Um, so they, they kind of reflected my psychological impressions of that place. And you can see that the imagery is sort of like, uh, when, you, when you can see it, it's kind of like exploding and, um, and transforming. Uh, so yeah, I, was, I, was, I guess trying to sort of depict my my uh, impression of that landscape. And there was another really interesting aspect of this work for myself in making it. Um, it was my own sort of point of view and my own sort of perspective that I was able to achieve in these drawings. And I felt like there was a relationship between the perspective that I brought to the drawings and the perspective that I had as I was moving throughout the city. Um, and coming from such an open place as New Mexico, I, I wanted to kind of experience that. I wanted to bring that to this landscape that's very heavy and dark and congested. Um, for, I think, I don't know, the first couple of months that I was in Scotland, in Glasgow, 
I, I was making these drawings of like these real tight perspectives, like one point perspective, sort of as if you were looking down the street. And I couldn't get outside of that little, you know, my internal projector was just totally locked into that viewpoint. Um, and it wasn't until one evening I finally uh, went up to the top of this one of the larger buildings in Glasgow and finally got a view of the city, of the layout of the city, and I sort of finally understood how the space was laid out. And that kind of inspired the sense of aerial perspective in the work, um, which became a, a big part of it. Um, so it sort of touched off a, a series of drawings and prints, um, as I said, based on my sort of psychological impression of the city. And that work all kind of culminated in my DNA exhibition, my thesis exhibition. Um, <coughs> and especially in particular in this piece here. And there's a number of different things going on in the work. Uh, there's sort of a number of different layers. Um, and one of those layers is a motif that I was working with at the time, that just sort of kept recurring in the images that I was making, was this map. Uh, sort of map imagery, and um, having all of the activity of the composition sort of exploding out of this map space. And I think maps are really incredible uh, things. You know, it's something that you can hold in your hand, uh, but that gives you a sense of the entire landscape around you, whether it be, you know, the, the town or the city that you're in, or uh, the country that you live in, or the world. I think that's a pretty incredible thing. These, these collections of lines and shapes um, are sort of symbolic of, of all of the space that surrounds us. And from a single point, you know, I can interpret everything that exists out there around me. Um, so that's part of what compelled me to, to include these maps. I also think that they upon returning to New Mexico and sort of going over this experience and making this work, um, it was a sort of way of maintaining a connection to that place uh, without being totally sentimental, I guess. Um, so yeah, it was, it was kind of a way of maintaining a personal connection. Um, and then, of course, I wanted the work to have a physical up until that point, I was making drawings, and the previous image was a relatively small drawing. And so it was important to me, I really wanted, in terms of having this exhibition, to, to challenge myself to really expand the scale of my work, and the sort of scope of my work. Um, so the piece that you're looking at here is made up of a number of different things. Uh, these three panels are sort of the map imagery, the screen printed on there. And then the shapes are painted on, and then that painting extends out onto the wall of the gallery instead. Um, and uh, there were, then there were all these vowel rods that sort of, oh man, they're fun. Um, yeah, we'll deal with it. Very quickly. Um, <laughs> um, well, uh, there were all these dowel rods that were sort of projecting off uh, the surface of these panels, um, kind of exploding out in the center of that map uh, image. And then there were all these pieces, these uh, pieces of prints that I made in drawings, out from prints that were kind of like these building uh, structures that were sort of uh, mutating and transforming. And I built these kind of little architectural models behind those. And so, so it was kind of like taking, at each level, it was taking something that was two-dimensional and pushing it into three-dimensional space. I felt like the imagery really kind of called for that, you know, in terms of depicting architectural space, uh, felt like sort of an active step, and then actually push it out into the, the viewer's space, into three-dimensional space. Um, and here's a, a little bit better shot of what those individual little print structures look like. Um, you can see that the image of the building is sort of, it's not it's totally distorted. Um, 
that I kind of just draw out from the prints that I was making, that piece of the top is a little piece of an etching that I have made and I drew out from that. Um, and I think the intention behind having those buildings transformed like that was really to sort of take this very dense thing, you know, buildings associated with being very heavy and porous and rooted and fixed in place and immovable, and kind of making it lighter and more malleable. Uh, which I think reflected my own desire to, to do that with the city space, to sort of expand my own perspective and my own ability to see the city. Um, so, in doing, in making this piece, in sort of expanding the scale of my work, um, expanding the sort of number of different elements that I was drawing on to make the work, um, I felt something really exciting happen, and I really wanted to keep pursuing those ideas. Um, and that was kind of part of the impetus, the inspiration to, to seek out a graduate program. I took a little bit of time off between undergrad and grad school in terms of getting uh, that application process started. Um, and that was a very valuable time too. I don't know, I'll just take, I guess, a little moment here to talk about that. So I know that maybe some of you were thinking about grad school, or I'm sure you're all thinking about what you can do after this, in any case. And some of you are artists, some of you are designers, so your uh, career choice is probably a little bit different. Um, you know, my background, of course, is in the fine arts, so I can speak to that trajectory a little bit, a little bit better. Um, but just a little quick note on grad school, and I'd be happy to talk more about this if anybody you know, has some burning questions about that whole process. Um, you know, for me, I, I always recognized when I was an undergrad and I saw what the grad students were doing, UNM was a, was a pretty good grad program. And when I saw them, we could just go to their uh, critiques. And when I went to those, it was just very inspiring, the sort of uh, intensity of that atmosphere. It seemed like they really pushed their work beyond uh, what they had come in. Um, and so I knew that I wanted to take this body of work, these ideas that I had sort of initiated, and expand that. So that was part of my reasoning. I think if you guys are thinking about it, maybe something just to keep in mind is it helps to have kind of a bit of a sense of what you want to get out of it, a little bit of intentionality. Um, especially with fine arts, you know, it's not, not necessarily a guaranteed job afterwards. It's not necessarily why you go to the class. But it's a wonderful opportunity to extend your practice, to extend art that you make. Um, so, I'm sure you've got a lot of professors here that have their own unique uh, experiences in grad school, and, you know, we will really talk with you guys about that. I would seek out all of their opinions, because um, there are definitely reasons for it, and there are, you know, other reasons why you might go away and uh, get some other experience. Uh, I think one thing that, that can be really crucial is just seeing what your studio practice looks like outside of the institution, outside of a school environment. You don't have like projects to do. You know, you guys know how to make things at this point. Uh, so when you don't have classes that are, are telling you this is the sort of confines, this is the project, but it's really coming from within yourself. What sort of emerges out of that? What things you're interested in? Uh, so I think spending some time in doing that before you make a decision to seek out a graphic program can be never be found. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to say about that right now. Um, oh, with one more. Just real quick. Choose a program that suits you. If you do want to go to graduate school, choose a program that suits you. I think in the art world, there's this huge uh, concern with the names. We all hear about these big name schools. It's, 
totally like a lure in this one paradigm, even as soon as it has that application. But you know, to, in my experience, that's not as important as what you get out in terms of how much you expand your art. And that can take place uh, in a lot of different environments. So do some research, check out some programs. Uh, you know, a lot of state schools have fantastic art programs, and you won't pay as much money as you would it. Like the artists that teach opera, for example, or something like that. Not saying that those institutions are you know, excellent, but it's worth your while to put these in other places as well. Um, so just stop and mention that. Um, yeah, so I chose to go to the grad school at the time of School of Art. Um, and you know, I had this kind of body of work that I was really interested in pushing, exploring more. Uh, and I was pretty confident. At that point, I was pretty confident that you know, I knew how to make art. Um, I knew how to make things. And I think I could do it pretty well. Uh, and then I got to grad school, and all of that sort of, everything that had seemed so clear about my artistic practice really got kind of just put into a letter. Uh, and I think that there's a lot more of an emphasis in grad school on uh, thinking as opposed to thinking. You know, you guys learn how to think it's done that. Yeah. Yeah. And grad school is an opportunity to really think about the practice and sort of uh, think about the ideas that go into your work and what you draw on and make it. It really kind of defining the conceptual structure of, of your artistic practice. Um, so that's what I got hit with uh, right off the bat. And uh, it was a lot of feedback, uh, you know, constant studio visits, constant meetings with people, constant critiques. And I think, uh, you know, all that feeling of really being confident and like, uh, I don't know how to make art, sort of dissipated really rather quickly. Uh, which I recognize now was a good thing at the time, it was like pretty shocking. Uh, and I think my response to that was sort of to default back to things that I felt comfortable with. And so I was, you know, I sort of continued on in terms of this investigation of architecture and uh, space. Um, and my solution to sort of dealing with the pressure at that point of reading is the environment is just to make things more complex and sort of be more ambitious in terms of complexity. Here's an image from that time. You know, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's an all right thing to look at. Um, but I, I felt like there was something missing in this work that I, that I had started making that way. And I think it, in a lot of ways it was that, you know, I had come to this new environment, but I was still kind of reaching backward for my source material, the content of the work. Um, I was still kind of reaching back to the work that I was making in undergrad to sort of through inspiration. Um, and so something felt off. Something felt, uh, you know, just didn't feel quite right about the work that I started making. Um, and I think that's, you know, location is really important for us to Integrating places that I'm working in into the work that I make uh, is really important for my for my artwork, uh, and I think that aspect of things was missing at that point. Fortunately, in the meantime, in my studio, uh, I had all these like wonderful leftovers from the work that I thought I was making, from all that stuff that I thought was really important, and was really interesting. I had all these leftovers, and I had these like, big sheets of cut paper that I like, cut out all these little buildings that I ended up putting into this other like, super complex piece that was just like way, you know, way too intense. Um, but I had these leftovers, and I started playing around with them in my studio, hanging them up, hanging them up in this kind of like successive pattern like that. Um, and, you know, of course, it's pretty clumsy in, in appearance. It's, kind of a homely creature, uh, but something very interesting was happening in that work. Uh, I found that the way that 
paper hung in space, was doing some interesting things. And especially when I photographed those pieces, um, I could pull out some really interesting details that I could find some very interesting perspectives within that construction that was pretty uh, rough. Um, and I found that I could capture all of those qualities that and perspective and dynamic space that I was trying so hard to achieve in the drawings and prints that I was making. I, all of a sudden, it threw this kind of back door. It felt very right, felt very quick. Um, and because of that, I was super suspicious of it. Yeah, everything else was so, took so much hard work. And this felt so easy that it, you know, it must not be serious. Um, but I think you know, that, that sort of highlights the importance of play in studio practice. I think I'm a big believer in that. Um, one of my professors at that time told me that making sticks quicker. And I think that's a, that's a nice way to think about working in the studio. You know, if you always got your eye on this finished, polished piece, you kind of miss all of that stuff in the middle. Um, you know, going back to just like the very basic stuff that you learn, you know, you go through art school in terms of sketching out the idea beforehand. Um, but these were like sketches. These were like little spatial sketches. Um, and there was some really exciting stuff happening in these. Um, so, you know, I just, I, I definitely think that allowing yourself time to play in your work is pretty crucial. And, and take notice of it. You know, don't discount something because you don't think it's your real work. That was also another wonderful aspect of gaming practice, but it's having a studio that I could go to all the time. I spent every day in there. And it would get just you get so exasperated and so worn out and tired of like looking at your work. But um, that can also be, you know, when you get that tired, when you get that sort of frustrated with what you're doing, I think it opens you up to, to finally playing around. Uh, so that's kind of a really interesting aspect of the practice. So it sort of took me a while to kind of come around to that process of playing around, making these constructions, these little miniature installation sketches. Uh, but what I did, I, I realized there was some really, uh, pretty exciting aspects of the work that was coming out of that. Um, I'll just mention real quick, there's this wonderful book by the artist William Henkridge. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with his work. Uh, he has this awesome R21. I don't know if you guys watch that program. You should check it out. Um, he has this wonderful R21 sort of feature on his work. And in that, he's, one of the things he says is uh, all of the interesting work that I've done has been against ideas that I've had. In between the thing that I thought I was doing, the real work has happened. And I sort of felt like that really kind of applied to what I was doing at this time. Because it didn't feel like my real work, it felt more like, uh, you know, these, these almost kind of silly exercises. But I think that there, you can get a lot out of those. They're a little bit freer, they're a little bit more intuitive. Uh, so that kind of led me to doing those little sketches in my studio. Uh, led me into this piece here. Um, and it consists of blue, just a blue painter's tape uh, on my studio window, and the owl rods, and spring fabric. And spring fabric is like transparent fabric. Uh, I'm sure fibers see it, so I don't know if you guys are still in and it, is that strip, C-R-I? Yes, yeah, strip, S-C-R-I. Yeah. Or tool fabric. Oh, nice. Um, it's a beautiful material. 
Yeah, it's transparent. Yeah. You can see through it. Yeah. It catches a lot of that. It's totally important stuff. Um, but for this piece, I moved this construction site to the, to this right outside my studio. Um, and so I just started to trace that, that structure as it was being built. I started to trace the lines of the scaffolding and lines of the, you know, the uh, beams as they were putting up the structure of the building. Um, and it started to just as kind of a, you know, <coughs> I don't know, silly exercise in my studio. I put up a piece of tape on the window, all of a sudden there was this interesting sort of optical effect that was happening between the structure outside and the mark that I made on this transparent surface. Um, and I just sort of let that take over. I just kind of followed that idea. And it turned into this, you know, sort of piece that completely kind of invaded my studio space, um, which was a pretty, a pretty exciting process. And so I traced the building from all of these different perspectives and uh, kind of created this really dense network of lines. And I loved that the, that the work was more active. It took kind of life of its own. It wasn't coming from, from you know, my internal, it wasn't coming from an imaginary place. It was coming from a real place, a place that I had a relationship with. Um, so that was a, something that was really exciting to me. Um, and I also liked how just making a really simple addition, you know, piece of, putting a piece of tape on my window, my studio window, yeah. draw attention to something that might otherwise seem mundane or uh, even a nuisance. But in doing that, in accentuating you know, that thing through just a real simple action like that, it sort of draw viewers on into a little bit of different understanding of that place, of what was happening out there. Um, so I think in that way, it sort of addressed the act of looking itself. Um, you know, a very subtle shift can momentarily alter the way that something's perceived, the way that we encounter something, um, the way that we think about it. Uh, so that was a pretty exciting aspect of the work. Um, I also really liked that uh, <laughs> it kind of set things into motion. It had, you know, like I said, it had like its so, own. And the time of day, the weather outside, um, and the pace of the construction, all the many factors in the piece that kind of just, just kind of kept evolving. You know, I put in my studio every day, and I just get to work tracing because day by day they were putting up the building, and there would be all these new lines to build it. Um, and then at different times of day, uh, there would be different effects. For instance, I was working in the studio one night, there was a full moon, and it sent these shadows of all of those lines back into my studio. So I sort of had this projection in my studio of this space that I created. Pretty, pretty fascinating. So it was active, it was a little bit more, um, yeah, a little bit more active than in the drawings or trace I was making. And I continued taking pictures of that installation. Sort of throughout the process, I would take photographs of it. And uh, I was continually fascinated with how the pictures that I took really uh, sort of departed from the reality of the scene itself, the reality of the installation, to become different spaces entirely. Um, and, you know, the, I think that aspect of photography is very fascinating that, you know, depending on where you place the camera, you can capture a view of something that, that makes people question where they're at, where their point of view is at. Uh, and so, yeah, that was a really, something I was very fascinated by. by um, I really sort of enjoy the double take that happens when, uh, when people have these images they can't you know, sometimes tell where, where they're looking, what they're looking at. Um, and I, I really 
I think that you know we're generally pretty used to seeing and understand there's so much visual information in our world, and a lot of it is designed to just hit us quick, be sort of absorbed instantaneously, uh, without us ever you know even having to put in an effort to understand. And so I really like these images. Took a little bit more effort and sort of made you think twice about what it was to look at something. Uh, seeing didn't necessarily equal understanding. Uh, so, you know, working back and forth between photography and installation, I felt like they were kind of feeding each other. And the pictures that I was taking were, were kind of inspiring the uh, installation. It's a nice sort of move path between those two. Uh, I think through this project, I gained kind of a model for how I wanted to make work, how I wanted to engage with the places that I was working with. Um, and it was a, you know, a physical model, making these little alterations. But it was also kind of a conceptual model, you know, engaging with the place and spending time with it to notice what about the locations is unique to the of art, and then highlighting that in my work. Uh, in my studio practice, I try to be very observant and to sort of set myself up so that the work reveals itself, and all I have to do is kind of notice it and work there. Uh, and that kind of took me into the next phase of things. <laughs> the experience of travel has always been pretty uh, important, an important source of inspiration. You know, going to Scotland, going to Alaska, spending time there it was just really stimulating. So I, I took the opportunity to do the second year of my uh, MFA in Rome. Um, and I had this work that I was really excited about, and I was curious about how it would translate in a completely different context. Uh, I think something that's really interesting about travel, about the experience of going to new places, is that you know, you're unfamiliar with your surroundings, you don't really take anything for granted. And your brain is super active in figuring out your surroundings, you know, understanding how to, how to interact with the place. Uh, <laughs> And I think that, that for me, is equated to inspiration. Um, so uh, I began to integrate elements of Roman architecture into my work pretty quickly. Uh, you know, my interest in, in architecture to begin with, which is, you know, that city is a playground for fantastic architecture. And, uh, it definitely started to influence the things that I was making. Uh, I also started to make these large wall paintings uh, of these kind of empty architectural spaces. Sort of illusionistic, but uh, not completely illusionistic. And they were kind of impressions of spaces. And you know, there's a lot of ruins and a lot of remnants of structures in the world. And I like this because they're kind of like memories of the place, like memories of the space. And that's kind of the quality that I wanted to evoke. I didn't really want to evoke the actual structures themselves on like one book, but more kind of the impression that they left. Um, and I felt like that was kind of a way of linking my words to the place that I was working in. Uh, and another way that happened was through photography. When I was working in real photography, it was a much sort of more prominent uh, aspect of, of my process. I, in particular, I started working in black and white photography. And it really opened up my understanding of photography as a medium, sort of what happened with the special picture, uh, how it's you know, an actual impression of light around me. I don't know, I, I feel like I came to photography digital I never quite understood really what happened to take photo. But as I started to work in darker and 
after that what it meant is about an image of his work with the language. Um, then there were kids who couldn't make the music in that process of becoming the artists. Um, but I really like the, the just sort of the conceptual idea of making photographs. It's an impression of the light around you. It is space around you. Um, and it, the camera is sort of like this little eye. And it's just thinking about observation. It has a very direct link there. Um, and I'm so sorry about this crazy green screen thing you got going on with your guys. <laughs> um, I also think you have to talk to nice groups to establish a uh, kind of connection with the place. Um, so taking pictures really kind of could keep you into noticing light. And so light became a really active element in my work and it continues to be a key aspect of, of the work that we make. I'm fascinated by the ability of light to transform space. To confuse space. Um, and so I, I was making these wall paintings, and they involved uh, fabric and these hanging sheets of fabric. And then the whole sort of installation was illuminated by a video projection. And uh, I was kind of noticing all the different light phenomena was occurring in Rome. Rome first, well, it has an amazing light there. Um, there's a real clarity to it, a kind of vision to the light in that city. Um, so I was noticing all of these little light phenomena, like just, just little things, the way that uh, you know, light got reflected off the car window, or something like that. Um, and my studio in particular is a great environment for observing light. This, this quirky little basement studio with these windows that look out onto the street. And as cars would pass by in the afternoon, it would send this cascade reflections all around my studio. Um, and uh, I have just a little example of that here. Um, and they're really quite, I know they're quite beautiful little moments. Yes, you know, it's something that you might notice, you might not notice it. But when you take a little time to look at it, it's pretty extraordinary. It kind of tells a really interesting story about the place that you're in, in terms of the angle of the sun, you know, what season it is. Whether, and it was, it was interesting to be working in that studio throughout the course of the year, because the angle of the sun changed, and I couldn't get the same light patterns. That I did. So, so it, I don't know, it made me start thinking about time differently, kind of integrating that into the work. Um, but all from just this, this little phenomenon that it almost seemed kind of really consequential. Um, and my thesis exhibition, the kind of culmination of my uh, graduate study, kind of developed out of, out of that idea of looking at those little phenomenal types of services, the light phenomena, and kind of amplifying those. Um, and in that way, I felt like it was very much tied to, to the, the place that I was in, to Rome. Um, you know, filming these little pieces of light, um, or as a way of kind of, uh, you know, bringing, bringing the place into my studio. So I wanted to create an immersive sort of installation and highlight those, those little phenomena that I was noticing. Um, those little details that you know, are so noticeable but are always present 
and it just takes a, a little bit of investigation to see. Um, and I think that was part of the intent to, to illuminate something that you know, people pass by and that uh, you know, maybe they notice it, but that it's uh, pretty extraordinary in the last decade. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I created this space that was kind of uh, to contemplate um, life and architecture and space. Uh, and I kind of made it about the gallery space itself, the actual location that I was working in. I had a great opportunity, I think, mean, to sort of a few weeks to actually be in the gallery and just kind of be in that space and, and work within it to make the piece. You know, none of this work was constructed beforehand. It was all constructed uh, as part of, you know, the installation of the show. So it was very site-specific, uh, which was pretty thrilling to me because I wanted it to be really about that place. And the gallery itself had these two beautiful kind of ornate windows and the reflections that you saw in that video a few slides back were from that, from those windows. So I felt like it was a great place to do this piece in. Um, and it sort of allowed like, yeah, all that activity that's happening outside of the gallery into the gallery space. So it opened up the gallery space to allow that stuff in. And so I took, over the course of the weeks prior to the exhibition, I just made videos of all of the different light phenomena that I observed and used those, projected those in the gallery space. And I hung up all these pieces of transparent screw fabric um, to catch those uh, projections and to kind of multiply those projections. As well as doing another pretty large uh, architectural kind of wall painting. And I'd like to there were these sort of multiple layers happening. There was this architectural depiction of an architectural space um, sort of alluded to Roman architecture. And then there was this light that actually came from the place itself. Uh, and there was an element of time to too. Um, throughout the duration of the show, after I had you know, installed everything after I set it all up. I would open up the gallery windows during the day and just come up with the light to his day, but at night I would run my videos. Um, and I feel like the piece kind of evolved over time. You know, there were different times of day, different lighting conditions, and it, it might look completely different. You know, in the daytime, you could really notice the things on the wall. Um, Whereas when the video projections were running, it was a little bit more difficult to tell what was going on. Um, and then the videos themselves had their own kind of uh, life, I guess. And I actually got a little, a little video clip. It's hard to you know, talk about a piece of that actually showing it, so I'll let you guys take a look at what that ended up uh, looking like.
Uh, one thing that I started to do a little bit differently here was stretch the screw fabric um, over the entranceway so that the viewer couldn't really get inside the space but had to look at it through this certain screw. Um, and that was kind of a way of dealing with the presence of the people's presence inside the border. Uh, and just continuing to make photographs um, and exploring, exploring that investigation. Um, I'm, you know, I'm really caught up in that, in the whole idea of seeing and sort of understanding, seeing and believing, especially with this more recent work. Um, and these are all coming from sort of little installation pieces that I made, mean, which I like to think of almost as theater sets. And then with a the camera, I can go in and pull out different perspectives within, the, within those new installations. And the images themselves uh, don't bear a lot of, uh, but they don't give themselves away in terms of what they are or where they're pretending. And I like that ambiguity that they sort of cover in between something that's recognizable and something that's abstract, something that's unfamiliar. Um, I think that, uh, that seeing is sort of like a metaphor for thinking. Um, another, just to give you guys another quote, I like, I collect quotes, and sometimes I hear things articulated in a way that uh, I could not articulate for myself. Um, but there's this quote that I heard that I really find relevant to my work, and it's, it goes like this. Um, all there is to thinking is seeing something which makes you notice something which you haven't seen, which makes you see something that isn't even visible. And I like that progression of ideas. So I think that's the same sort of progression that I sort of try to invoke uh, through the work that I make to inspire a little bit deeper form of thinking. Uh, what's that? That's a by Norman McLean. And it's actually from the book of Rivers of Mother's Fluid, which, in addition to being about product vision, has some pretty interesting thoughts about perception and so reality. Um, uh, the prints I've been making recently are sort of taking pieces of photographs, rearranging them. I like this idea of dis distortion, uh, in terms of the way it's being out. And there's been a transformation too that happens when you know, going from an installation to a photograph, and then this is actually a print. Um, so in each media, the visual content sort of changes a little bit. Um, and every by approach can change a little bit. And, uh, I think, you know, for me, I try to perplex how you develop a sense of place. You see a place in a lot of different lights, a lot of different ranges. So I think we I mean, all sort of have associations with what home means. And home is usually a place that you have a deep connection with, that you've seen um, throughout the different seasons, different times of day. Um, and that's kind of how I think about, you know, reworking this image that's a way to just see things in a different way and to really explore uh, the, the kind of reality of what the original scene was. Um, so that, that kind of brings us up to date in terms of the uh, work that I've been making. Um, just, I guess I'll maybe just leave you with, leave you with a good thought in terms of, kind of my own impression when I was putting this little talk together and thinking about how my artwork has evolved, how my artistic process has evolved, and, and thinking about kind of where you guys are at. And you know, where, honestly where I'm at too. Um, I'm still very much engaged with kind of defining my career as an artist and choosing out opportunities that allow me to keep expanding my work. 
And I think just getting outside is something that, that has been so crucial for the development of my work. You know, whether it's getting outside the country, getting outside the town we live in, um, getting outside you know, the social group that you're in, uh, just to try to engage as many different people as you can. I think that's something that this, this contemporary artist is absolutely critical. As contemporary designers, artists, you know, the creativity right now, there's so much happening. And there's so much really just fantastic artwork that's happening out there. And the ways that people are looking at now and thinking, the ways that they're thinking about it now is so diverse um, that it's always to your benefit to sort of get out there and see what's going on. And you guys have an incredible opportunity to be here at TCJ between New York City and Philadelphia. You know, of course, in New York, it's a huge art capital. There's so much there. Uh, you know, that's just a great resource. And Philadelphia, as well, is a pretty fantastic capital art community right now. So, that's kind of what I based my work off of, is getting outside of my own perspective, sort of introducing viewers to a different way of looking at reality. Um, and I think that's come in large part from my own experiences getting outside of uh, sort of familiar to um, So I guess that's what I'll leave you guys with It's been a pleasure. We're a fantastic crowd to come up with that absolutely annoying green screen. Um, and let me know, you know, if you have questions, feel free to talk to me. Um, ask away. Otherwise, I'd also be thrilled to take a look at some of you guys. One piece of blue, man. You can take a look at it. But yeah, how about if anybody's got some work, come talk to me. We can set that up. But otherwise, it's been a real pleasure. And, uh,